Hey everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna go over a really common issue that you might encounter when using dropdown lists in Excel. So dropdown lists you, you might use in, in a form when you're creating uh, a way for someone to enter inputs because by using a dropdown list, it limits the options someone has. There's less of a chance that they're gonna make a mistake and they, they can't um, type j just type in whatever they want. So for example, I've got a really simple input section here where I've got a transaction date, let's say January 1, 2024. I've got an amount of, let's say $50. And we wanna select a store that our, our transaction occurred at. So to create a dropdown list, go to data, data validation, and let's select a list. And so I've got a list of stores here. You know, I can select a, a, a range here, or I can also create a named range. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hit okay. And so I've got my stores, right, for my selection, right? So it works well, but the problem occurs when we wanna to add to this list. So let's say I add Walmart. And so with with ranges that we've selected and um, where it doesn't automatically expand, like for example, if we created a named range and we added um, a cell here, if I just inserted, right clicked, insert and shift cells down, that, that named range will automatically expand and it'll be fine. But the problem happens when I add it at the very bottom. So there's no way to tell Excel that, hey, I want you to expand on this range. So for example, let's create another um, value here, shift cells down, let's call this office max, right? So go back to the, my, my dropdown list here and you'll see I've got office max. It automatically expanded that range. So Excel knew to expand it, but it did not pick up Walmart because Walmart was outside of this list. So it doesn't know that Walmart should be part of it. This is, so this, ha this is a common issue that happens when you add items at the bottom of a list. It doesn't automatically expand. So I'm gonna show you how we can get around this. And the key is to use a table. So I'm gonna select my data, just anywhere, any cell here. I'm gonna to go to insert table. And I'm gonna say my table has a header because I've got stores there. Hit okay. We've applied, we've applied the format. So now it's got my, my table listed here. And what I'm gonna do now, and actually a good way to, to reference this in um, a dropdown option, the first I'm gonna do is clear this off. So, so if I wanna reference this, I wanna do exactly with this syntax. Now, let me change the table name here. So let's call this table stores. And so let's go back to this. And now if I select this, I'm selecting my table as, as well as the field called stores. So to make this easier, I'm just gonna do control C to copy this. Now I'm gonna go into my data validation and I'm still using a list. This time what I'm gonna do is use the indirect function. The indirect function is basically gonna point my source to the, the value that I'm entering. So I'm gonna put in quotations, and I'm gonna paste that table stores table in the stores field. So it's a lot easier to copy and paste this than to try to get the syntax just right, especially with the square brackets and stuff like that. And if you got the the field named something and you forgot the name, it's a lot easier just to do a copy and paste. So I hit okay. Now I've got this and we've got Amazon, we've got Walmart on there. But now let's really test it out. Let's, let's say I add a, a, a store called XYZ at the very bottom here. So normally, it wouldn't pick up on a data validation. You'll notice here though, the table, you see this little um, green triangle at the bottom right, that tells us the table has expanded. So now if I go into here, X, Y, Z, right? So that's the, the beauty of using a table for this, for a dropdown list, because a table is automatically going to expand if I add something below here. Say so I add three Zs here that gets picked up as well. So it automatically is going to pick up. So it's a lot more useful to create your dropdown list, convert it into a table, and then use that indirect function. So a quick recap on how to reference that indirect function, or how to set that up. So if I just type in equals and select my, 
field here. He's noticed my arrow now pointing down. If I click on it now, I've got that description. I've got the table, uh, the table name, as well as the field that I want to grab from. So that's important. I need to include all of that. And so if you just grab that and copy and paste it, go to the data validation and put that within the indirect function and put it into quotes. And if you do that, you're basically telling, uh, using the indirect function to say, okay, look at this table and this field. That's where I want to pull the values from. And by doing so, you have a better drop down list now, one that's going to automatically expand regardless of where you add items, as long as you add items directly underneath. Now, if I add items down here, a few cells uh, below, let's try ABC store, right? That's not going to know to expand because obviously that's further away. But if it's right next to the right next to the table directly underneath, then it's smart enough to know, OK, that that's supposed to be included in the table it'll automatically expand. So as long as you, you do it that way directly underneath, it'll expand and you don't have to worry about, okay, I have to make sure it's not the last item or I have to insert in between, that sort of thing. As long as you add it directly underneath, the table will expand. And if you use the indirect function, you can reference that within your named range or within your uh, data validation and it'll automatically update and you don't have to worry about it. So that's how you can make your dropdowns more useful and dynamics so that are automatically updating. If you like this video, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.